Good morning everyone and could I extend a very warm welcome to you all to this our online service. Could I also extend a very warm welcome to any visitors who may be tuning in to our service as well. We do hope you'll enjoy the service. Uh, with regard to the intimations, a few uh, items to mention to you this morning. The first is with a touch of sadness I have to announce the death of Gordon Bitchy. Gordon, a long-serving member of our church, passed away on Monday of this week and Gordon's funeral service will take place at Hollytown Crematorium this coming Thursday, the 2nd of July at 2.30pm. Our condolences are with Gordon's family and friends. The second intimation is regarding a birthday. On a slightly happier note, Rosemary Pawson, it's her birthday on Monday. Rosemary, we wish you a very happy birthday come Monday. Uh, with regard to the ongoing situation about the possible reopening of the church, uh, we have had received guidance from both the Church of Scotland and the Scottish Government regarding the various precautions and procedures that we have to adopt. They are very involved and very detailed. Accordingly, we have had a meeting with the senior members of the Church and we have discussed all the various procedures which may have to be implemented prior to opening. After discussing, discussing all these bits and pieces, uh, we have come to the view that now is not the time to reopen the church, given the procedures that are involved. They are very detailed and very involved and would serve no great purpose for our church at the present time, although it's a constantly changing situation. Uh, we also have prepared a short letter outlining the situation and this letter will be delivered to all members in due course. Thank you very much indeed for your attention and I do hope you'll enjoy the service. Thank you. Listen, wisdom is calling. Before all began, God, Word and Wisdom. Creating, calling from the foundations of the deep. Listen, wisdom is calling. From the mountain tops, earth, fields, and sea, creating, calling, from the foundation of the deep. Listen, wisdom is calling. To those who suffer, God's love is given. Endurance blossoms from the foundations of the deep. Listen, wisdom is calling. Daily, God's delight, you, me, everyone, given hope, grace, love as the foundations of our lives listen wisdom is calling pour into our hearts that we may become christ's hand and heart love as the foundation of our lives listen wisdom, wisdom is, is calling, calling.
Loving Lord, we try so hard to live the life of faith, and yet we are told time and again that we could do better. Encourage us, we pray, where we have got it right, so that we can continue to live for you. Encourage us also where we have not got it right, so that we may better live for you. We pray that our life of faith, through worship, prayer and mission, will show other people the great love you have for them. Make us into lamps of your love and our church into the lampstand that allows the light to be seen. We offer this prayer together with the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Amen. Like a person, wisdom calls out to you. Understanding raises her voice on how tops along the road and at the crossroads, she stands calling. She stands beside the city gates, at the entrances into the city. She calls out, people, I'm calling out to you. I am shouting to all people. You who do not know better, get the ability to think. You who are foolish, get understanding. Listen, I have important things to say. What I tell you is right, what I say is true. I hate it when people speak evil. Everything I say is honest. Nothing I say is crooked or false. People with good sense know that what I say is true. People with knowledge know that my, my words are right. Choose my teachings instead of silver. Choose knowledge rather than the finest gold. Wisdom is more precious than rubies. Nothing you want is equal to it.
Well, we've made it. We're at the end of a 10-week journey exploring the possibilities of different languages in terms of engaging God and the possibility of God's presence. We know that God sometimes comes to us in thunder and lightning. Sometimes God comes to us in whisper and gentle breath. Sometimes God comes to our doors, indoors. God comes to us through our body, through our heart, through our mind, through our awareness, through our prayers, through our worship, through our song, through our drama, through our stories. God comes in a variety of ways. And so hopefully, prayerfully, each one of us has found at least one language that resonates with us. We know that there would be a certain measure of overlap. And we're always hopeful that sooner rather than later we'll be able to meet together. But we've been following government guidelines and we've been aware that we need to proceed very slowly and cautiously because we want to be mindful particularly of those who would be vulnerable at a time of a challenge such as this. And so hopefully, briefly here, Bells Hill Central, you have enjoyed the ways in which we have been meeting. You have found ways of encouraging each other to tune in either through the internet or through the gift of the phone, or just simply reminding people through uh, messages, cards, little reminders that they are not forget forgotten. And so it's a real privilege to be amongst Bells Hill Central Parish Church and to be part of the larger body that seeks to express something of this remarkable sense of connection that is Bells Hill Central Parish Church. And so our last, our last reminder, our last language is the language of the intellectual, the mind. Sometimes they say the distance between heaven and hell is the distance between this and this, between the head and the heart. But we are hopeful as well that our mind will be renewed. That is one of the constant invitations of scripture that we pay attention to our mind, the way we think about God. And we are invited to think repeatedly about the nature of God and God's action at work in us and in the wider world. Obviously, there are many different things that can um, stretch our minds and indeed invite us to ask a variety of questions. And so I'm just going to look at two particular biblical passages today and offer a few thoughts in terms of other possible invitations in terms of our minds. Right throughout the Bible, there is a constant invitation both to value the gift of wisdom, to struggle with wisdom. So in other words, not merely to be someone who is marked by knowledge and information. We live in an information age, but to truly appreciate life for the gift that it is to be truly wise, to know when to speak, to know when to be quiet, to know when to think, to know when to act. Uh, it's not easy. And I'm sure all of us at one stage or another have bumped our head. And one of the uh, principal characters of wisdom, apparently, is Solomon. Tradition ascribes even all the Proverbs to him. And this is one of those indicators of how tradition valued him. 1 Kings chapter 4 from verse 29 onwards reads as follows. God gave Solomon wisdom and very great insight and a breadth of understanding as measureless as the sand on the seashore. Solomon's wisdom was greater than the wisdom of all the men of the east and greater than all the wisdom of Egypt. He was wiser than any other man, including Ethan the Ezrahite, wiser than Heman, Kalkol and Dada, the sons of Mahol, and his fame spread to all the surrounding nations. He spoke 3,000 proverbs and his songs numbered 1,005. Described plant life from the cedars of Lebanon to the hyssop that grows out of walls. He also taught about animals and birds, reptiles and fish. Men of all nations came to listen to Solomon's wisdom, sent by all the kings of the world who had heard of his wisdom. In other words, wisdom is experienced. It is a, a sense of absorbing all that we see and appreciate and hear around us, discerning it, working through it. Uh, working out what is wheat and what is chaff, learning from our experience, from our mistakes as well as our successes, from the times when we have risen and the times when we have fallen. And so Solomon, as we well know from the biblical accounts of his life, wasn't someone who always acted wisely, but learnt from his experiences. And so tradition 
ascribes to him a real sense of movement in terms of wisdom. We know that that is uh, marked a little bit by biblical imagination and traditional imagination, but there is a pearl there for us to appreciate the pursuit of wisdom. And one of the ways in which we pursue wisdom, one of the ways is paying attention to scripture, reading it carefully, attentively and repeatedly, not merely opening it at our favorite passages time and time again, but trying every now and again to uh, read someone who might well have reflected on scripture, reading a passage or even a letter in its entirety, reading a gospel, getting a feel for the life and the story and the ministry and the wisdom of Jesus. And so Paul writes to Timothy, and it's a well-known passage to Timothy, chapter 3 from verse 10. He writes these words. You, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, my faith, patience, love, endurance, persecution, sufferings. What kinds of things happened to me in Antioch, Iconium and Lystra, the persecutions I endured. You, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil men and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you know those from whom you learned it, and how from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. An appreciation of the gift and the value of wisdom that is received in it through a careful and repeated study of scripture. It is a wonderful reminder for instance, of the absolute beauty that is Scripture in its entirety. There are, however, constant challenges. We know that we need to use our mind, for instance, and not only Scripture. Maybe we need an appreciation of history, community, who we belong to, why. I have a particular love for church history. I've appreciated some of the characters, the temperaments, the learnings, the experiences of those who have preceded me, and there is great wisdom in appreciating that we stand on the shoulders of giants. There's value, for instance, in theology, reflecting, trying to find a word about God, trying to find something that gives us an indicator, a handle of um, what might be at the heartbeat of our faith. In my own estimation, I might well say, God is very good. We, however, are frail and fragile. We fall short of what God longs for us. Somehow God moves toward us in a variety of actions and moments through the gift of calling a specific people time and time again, a reminding and a restoring, a renewing, and then a revealing in Jesus Christ and an outpouring in the Holy Spirit that enables us week by week and month by month as we gather to worship to hear some of the strains and the whispers of God's presence as we make our way through the world, engaging our mind, reflecting on who God might be. And there is also obviously great gifts and appreciations in terms of sensing ourselves as part of a larger body, a body that reflects something of our different political opinions and insights, our different psychological makeup, our different temperaments, our different gifts and creativity. And so, yes, we learn from each other. We learn from the past, yes, we learn from our resources, spiritual and otherwise, but we also learn from the present and we look forward to gaining further knowledge and wisdom as we move into the future by appreciating each other. And so throughout this gift of sharing these languages, my hopeful prayer is that each one of us would find some way of identifying with the larger narrative that is the Christian faith tradition and appreciating that we know something. We have a gift to share. We have an insight to share. We have a way of being in the world that is unique and special and remarkable. And so today, as we value the gift of the mind, I get, value that gift as well as being part of the larger sense of community that is the remarkable gift of the church. And so I'm going to share 
a brief blessing from a few young girls who aged 11 to 12 last week. I read a blessing from a young British woman, and this is a variety of girls from the United States of America. We're just reflecting on girl talk and the wonderful gift of paying attention to life. Their names, Cora, Kalia, Lauren, Meg, and Rachel. And they write this on girl talk. It helps us appreciate the gift of mind and imagination, exploration and body, the gift of the variety of languages that we've been able to explore over these past 10 weeks. Bless my mind for all it is and for being there when times are rough. Bless my arms that help me climb. Bless my heart that helps me love. Bless my consciousness for telling me what's right. Bless my lips that help me talk and ask questions. Bless my nose that smells the freshness of spring. Bless my hands that touch with care. Bless my eyes that see beauty. Bless my toes that keep me balanced. Bless my hair that sways in the wind and keeps my head warm. Bless my ears that hear the sound of all things that go round and round. Thanks for the faces that show feelings when words cannot. Thanks for the vertebrae that let me crack my back, which feels good. Be good arms, be good legs, be good eyes, be good body. Do I really have to say this? One cannot say, hand, I have no need of you, or I, I have no want of you. For there are many parts, but one body. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we probably all have different experiences of life, different insights, different political opinions, different ways of being in the world. We have different understandings and experiences of your grace, your action, your love, your goodness, and your beauty. We have different ways of relating to the possibility of your presence together, alone, in stillness, in expression, in enthusiasm, in activity, in quiet. We have different ways of being who we are and trying to sift through our knowledge so that we might truly be wise. Help us, gracious and loving God, as we have explored these variety of languages, to truly appreciate the remarkable gift that we are in our individuality, yes, as part of a wider community at Bells Hill Central Parish Church, part of an ever-widening community in Bells Hill and North Lanarkshire, part of a wider community in the Central Belt of Scotland, part of a wider community in terms of the country that is Scotland, part of a wider community that is the United Kingdom, part of a wider community that is our connection with Europe and Africa and beyond. Loving and gracious God, thank you that we are able to speak of you. Thank you more importantly, that even in extraordinary times, you are able to speak to us. Continue, we pray, by your grace, in Jesus' strong name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Blessed be God by Jean Maryland. Blessed be God in the dark and the light, in trouble and joy, sorrow and delight. Blessed be God for still centre in the storm. Blessed be God for relief in pain. Blessed be God in the refugee camp. Blessed be God in the aid workers' strife. Blessed be God in the man in the street, lying in shop doorway out of the rain. Blessed be God in the woman at the corner, plying her trade as life is so hard. Blessed be God who creates and saves, who corrects and leads on to the ultimate good of a kingdom where all will find room and the dark and the light will be one. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that in Christ dwells all the wisdom of the Godhead bodily and that we are part of his spiritual body and one with him by faith. We pray that we would be granted wisdom to choose the good and give up temptations to do bad and that our lives may be rooted in him so deeply that his mind will influence our actions, attitudes, words and behaviour so that Christ is seen in us. On this day we give thanks for all that we have. We have family and friends who can eat and drink. Let us also remember those among us that have less than less to be thankful for. While we give thanks for this food, let us remember and pray for the farm workers whose labours made all our meals possible. 
Let us remember and pray for the poultry worker, the canner, the truck driver, the grocery store clerk and the cooks who made this meal and all our meals possible. And while we pray in thanks, let us pray all people receive enough through their labours so that they can live in security and that no one go hungry for lack of decent wages. Let us seek and find ways to share our nation's bounty with all those, those in need. In Jesus' name, Amen. Today, in closing our journey over 10 weeks of exploring a gift of variety of languages, we have paid attention to the gift of the intellectual, the stretching after knowledge and wisdom. And part of that is a grappling with biblical truth. A wonderful character in that regard is the character of Jacob who becomes Israel. I will not let you go unless you bless me, his experience of the divine at Peniel. I read from Bernard Thorogood's Blessing. There are many wrestlers who through the night argue and question and make demands on God. Distraught people who have lost what is precious. Worried people who wonder where sorrow will strike. Guilty people who fear they will be found out. Uncertain people who have found no solid rock. People in pain and people in hunger. These wrestle through the night until morning comes. But Jacob was blessed and called the place Peniel because he said, I have seen God face to face and yet my life is spared. Bless the wrestlers, God of Jacob, God of Gethsemane, midnight God. Bless with light, bless with sanity, bless with courage, bless with each new day. Amen. <laughs>